Hey everybody, welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns. What we've got for you today is the BR4 G2 Bipod from Accutac Bipods. Accutac Bipods doesn't just make bipods, they make Picatinny rail adapters, oh, scope rings with levels built into them, they make really high quality beefcake, super strong stuff. So if that's what you're in the market for, go check out Accutac website. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, so I got a whole bunch of bipods from Accutac. As you can tell, I'm kind of a fan. <laughs> I found Agitag bipods a few years ago and I was just so impressed by them. I just kept getting more and more and then the updates came from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2. Uh, for example, here's, a, here's the Gen 2 BR4G2. We're going to talk about that today. And I'll also highlight this guy a little bit too. This is the BR4 Gen 1. On my rifle, I've got the FCG2. And this is also an FCG2. It's got the sled feet on it. And I mean, look at the nice stance on that, how it's cradled the rifle. We're going to get to that another day. But I just wanted to show it to you to, sh to show you that they don't just make one model. They make a whole bunch of different models and all of them are top notch, high quality bipods. Oh yeah. And I've got this guy. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Is that, I mean, holy cow. And the beefcake legs. I mean, this thing is a monster. This is the FC-10QD, and um, yeah, if you want a large bipod, I <laughs> don't know that they come much bigger than that. I want to take a quick minute to mention that I just came back from the Extreme Benchrest competition down in Arizona, and uh, I'm mentioning this because shooters from around the globe come together and shoot against one another. They've tuned their guns, they've sorted their ammunition, they're shooting big bore, they're shooting small bore, field target, long range, speed shooting, everything. All kinds of disciplines are coming together and they're shooting against one another and they're bringing their A game because there's prize money on the line and they want that in their pocket just like I do. Um, this year I shot exclusively off AccuTac bipods and I managed to pick myself up a nice trophy, a beautiful gold medal, and a nice big old check that I'm going to add to the wall. Uh, but I took notice of something as I was on the firing line getting ready to shoot my heat. I looked down this row of say 40 shooters um, in each heat and I see AccuTac, 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 something else, something else, AccuTac, AccuTac, homemade, AccuTac. I mean it's just there was such a large representation of AccuTac bipods down there. It was it was like wow. So I want you guys to consider that when the best of the best get together to bring their A game they want to shoot off the best, and the best is AccuTac. The BR4G2 bipod is a five and a half to eight and a quarter inch bipod. Comes in with a retail price of around $300 and a weight of 20 ounces. It attaches to your rifle via a quick release Picatinny rail, or if you have an Arca system, they sell models that attach to an Arca system as well. The legs have a 90 degree position, a 45 degree position, and then stowed forward and aft. They also extend, just like that, and it has a tilt feature. No pan feature on this model, but the tilt feature is very nice. The feet are interchangeable. You just unscrew them, take them off, and then you have your option. You can get spikes alone, that screw in, just like that. You got a spike option, or you can get a claw option that will then screw on top of the spike and give you a spiked claw type of situation. Or like I mentioned before, you can even get sleds for this. Pretty nice. If you buy an AccuTag bipod, one of the things you're gonna get in the box is a warranty card. I bring this up for two reasons. One, if you're spending 300 bucks plus on a bipod, that's a lot of money for a bipod. You wanna make sure the company's got your back. And with AccuTac, they've got your back. They've got a lifetime warranty on their bipods. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh wait, yes it does, because the warranty is transferable. So, if you're looking for a used AccuTac, know that it's gonna come with a, with a warranty transferred over. You also get a little sticker, and you finally get a little, uh, a spare set of feet, of the rubber feet, with a little note on there that says, these can come loose, and I've seen it happen. The feet will unscrew a little bit, and then they just kinda will walk off and run off. <laughs> so stick a little um, dab of Loctite on here and you're good to go and you may never actually need the spare feet. The point is AccuTac listened to their shooters and the guys kept saying, hey, the feet keep coming loose. So they said, you know what? We're gonna throw an extra set of feet in there. That way in case you do lose one, you're already covered. Pretty cool AccuTac. 
All right, guys, so here's the BR4 Gen 1, the BR4 Gen 2. Right away, you can tell the difference in the leg size, and that's because the Gen 2 now has extendable legs. You can also see a difference in the feet, much bigger, much more beefy. Um, and then the hub design has been completely changed. The Gen 1, this used to be the thumb screw that you would use to get your tilt option. Now you've got this nice lever that faces the shooter and it's easy to grab and works really, really well. On top of that, we've got some differences in the attachment points. So on the Gen 1, you've got a lever here that you have to manipulate 180 degrees in order to lock it onto your rifle. Um, also, this little th uh, screw here, this can be turned freely. On the new one, they've changed all that. You only have to come out a little over 90 degrees. Additionally, they've got this little flat spot right here on it, and that acts as a lock to lock it into your rifle. It works pretty well, too. On the other side here, this little nut, um, this now has little flat spots on it that will lock into the body of the bipod and they'll snap into place and hold your position. It's also nice if you're a little bit too tight, you over adjusted, whatever, you can just come back one notch and that's probably gonna get you right where you need to be or vice versa if you're too loose. The Picatinny rail on the BR4 has two bars that fit into your Picatinny rail. Most bipods only have one. And then you just push your lever and snap it into place. That's it. It's got like, a, it's not really a snap, it's more of a thud, thunk and you're in place. Once you're there, if you need to adjust the legs, it's gonna be a pull down. There's a spring in here, and you pull against it, and you get to the next position. You can see that difference right in here, and you can see how it works right there. So I'll pull and snap back into place. One of the nice things about it is the design of this, it's like a sloped type of triangle type design, so it's gonna wedge itself up in there and that's gonna take out all the slop in the system, which is pretty nice. In order to adjust for tilt, that's gonna be, like I said, this lever right here, and you tilt back and forth. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that it's glass smooth, but I will say it's kinda of like it wishes it was glass smooth. <laughs> it's really close. Last thing to look at is leg extension. Just a simple pull. Again, there's a spring inside here that's gonna give you a little back pressure. You push a button, and it snaps right back into place. If you need to come out and just find that one spot, you know, it's a lot easier to do on the way out rather than the way in, because the way in, you're gonna have to use two hands. Here we are at the bench to take a look at how easy this bipod is to work from the bench rest position. I think it's a pretty important position since a lot of shooting is done from the bench. So let's say my rifle's a little off tilt. Um, can I bring it back real easy? Yup, you just reach up, grab your, lever and then tighten it down and it sticks right where you tighten it down at so that's good uh, as far as leg adjustments if i just need to come out one or two three or four let's say just one bingo i got that uh, let's say i have to adjust for a, a large tilt um, i can do that either with the legs like most other bipods but can i overcome this yes i can overcome that and then some and reach level um, you know what while I'm here, let me take a look at if I can overcome <laughs> a full leg extension, and I already know the answer is yes. Um, that's a full leg extension and easily overcomes it with the tilt feature, and then some. <laughs> Next up, let's take a look at changing the position of the legs. If there's a weak spot in the Actitech system, I think this is going to be it. And the reason is all this spring pressure. So I pull down and make my adjustment doable it's a lot easier on the shooter side of course but the issue is when I pull down on this I'm pulling the whole rifle this way and in order to stop that it's going to transfer all the way down the rifle and right to your wrist that's the hard part about that now I've come up with a system to make that a little bit easier on me the shooter as well as the gun because I have some guns with very fragile stocks and I was afraid that you know all that pulling and tugging over time could weaken up my mounting plate and strain the whole uh, stock of the rifle. So it's kind of like a this type of a motion in here. And I just put my thumb against the bipod body and it allows me to just get an anchor point to pull against and make that leg move. And I can do that to both sides pretty easily. And that's pretty much it guys. 
Let's head outside and do some more practical testing. The next test I'm going to do is meant to simulate loading the rifle against an object such as this um, and coming in and seeing how this bipod performs. Before I get started though, I do want to mention this rifle's not loaded. It's been checked and double checked and there's no bullets around, so I won't be shooting today. So we come in to our object and we load on the rifle. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> it is really like like running into a wall. I mean, it is so, wow, that is solid. There's no, I'm looking for slop here. The only slop I've got is a touch in the leg extension and maybe the feet, just a little hint there, but it's like, bang, you are there. As solid as this is, <laughs> that's as solid as this is. Let me bring you guys in for a closer look. So here I come up and I lean into my rifle and I mean, I'm, I'm pushing on this thing, guys. I am really, pushing on it and there's there's like there's no flex you might see a little bit of movement there but i can't even feel it there's almost no flex and it's super duper solid now not having a pan feature means if i want to pan and shoot i'm going to have, a, have to pivot off one leg and it's doable it just kind of leaves you floating a little bit um, but wow is that solid um, yeah here's the slop if you can see it you kind of see it here in the button kind of moving around but wow there's like nothing and there's just a touch just a the slightest hint up here at the pivot point i see that in a lot of bipods if i need to take an extreme angle shot such as this i just have to make sure that whatever i'm up against is going to uh hit the legs or allow the feet to move back and that'll be my support point so just something to be aware of but same thing, guys. I mean, I can load into this. I can't pan, once again, because, you know, no pan feature. But, uh, wow, super solid. Uh, if I was to reverse load the rifle, it's when you're pulling back on it. Uh, I can do that as well. No problem. Next up, I'm going to take a look at the barricade shot. It's when you've got like a hole or something like that that you're going to shoot through, or you have a ledge uh, of a wall or something like that. So we'll come in and lean in and it's solid. I mean, <laughs> I am leaning so hard into this. It is just solid. If I go back and forth, I got a little bit of a bump. And the reason why is I'm transferring from this, uh, these two points in front of the bipod, I'm transferring from one to the other. So it's like doink, doink. And it's, uh, you've got your pivot point, you transfer over to your other. Up on the wall, it's going to be the exact same thing. No problem at all. Now, I've seen barricade done like this. I don't like it. I'm not a fan at all. But it is very solid, except for that transition. Um, so I'm going to stick to this. These are the two points I'm talking about right here. And they have to do with the, uh, the leg positioning plate. Uh, that's where you're hitting on the bipod. You're hitting here, and then you're just resting the, uh, the rest of the wall is hitting on your rifle. So we come in like this, and we lean in. Any pressure transfer is going right into the body of this and going right up into your pick rail. All right, guys, here we are in the prone position. Let's manipulate the rifle from this position see how easy it is. Uh, if I need to extend the legs real quick and easy, I can do that, no problem. Tilt, nice and easy. Real simple, simple. If I need to adjust the legs for position, it's gonna be just like on the bench rest where I'm gonna to wanna to use my other hand to make this movement happen. And that's that. As far as sitting or kneeling shots go, well, it's just not made for it. It's just not long enough, and there's no super long leg extensions that I can put on here. So the only way to do that is if I have something like this that I can lean onto, then we're good to go. Next up, let's take a look at using the bipod as a handle. And it's solid, guys. I mean, it's gonna be as solid as when I had it up against here. It's gonna pull that rifle right up into you. In fact, if you have the iron sights on a 45, you come in and you can tilt like this and it's almost in the perfect position for those iron sights to be working. Maybe we'll come up on a post and we need to post in. Can totally do that. 
Now, it's not ideal because the front of this, it's got a bump right here, but it's a flat right there. It's not ideal, but it's gonna work for you. If you had the, sp the spike on here, that's another option for you. It's a little bit close to the muzzle, so you're gonna wanna use it in this fashion and not try to come in around here. Um, but it's, it'll spike in and it's gonna hold and grab for you. My next series of movements is meant to illustrate using the bipod in a more rushed and stressful environment, such as competition. So what I'm gonna do is start with my legs stowed. I'm gonna bring them both down to a 90 degrees, come in from the barricade shot, and simulate two shots. I'll then extend the legs out all the way and come all the way down for a prone shot. Then I'm going to retract both the legs, put them on a 45 and sit down for simulated two uh, bench rest shots. Let's see how we do. In three, two, one, go. Pop, pop. And pop, pop. And pop, pop. Wow. <laughs> Fast, strong, easy, reliable. That's what I would say about this. Wow, that was um, really good. Um, I had one thing that I experienced. I didn't know if I had gotten it all the way in the 45 when I was coming to the bench. So I did a quick check and put it down and I was already in the 45. These legs want to snap into place. So as long as you're close, when you let go, you're probably gonna hit your mark. Let's try it again. In three, two, one, go. And pop, pop. And pop, pop. 45. And pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's awesome, guys. Wow. Top level, top tier. Like I said earlier, this thing, forget about it. You buy this, you're done. You don't need to buy another bipod. One thing I don't know if you guys have noticed is when I'm coming up from the prone position to the bench rest, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing here and I'm doing two things at once. I'm depressing the button and I'm pulling down to go to that 45. And that's kind of a nice thing because bang, and it's just that fast. I can just two things at once. I don't have to worry about a separate movement to retract my leg. So real nice. All right guys, so it's pros and cons time, or maybe I should say pros and pros time. <laughs> um, you guys can see I'm already a fan of AccuTac. Um, when I went into this review with the BR4, I had you know a level of, a, of respect for it. I said, yeah, it's gonna perform about the same as other top tier bipods, and maybe it'll have a weak spot or two, and that's what I expected. Coming out of doing this review, my level of respect went way up. Uh, this thing was really impressive throughout this review. And that's some of the stuff that you guys maybe don't see on camera, maybe it doesn't make the final cut, but wow, I went from here up to here with this. Really awesome bipod. And honestly, for the six to nine size of bipods and this style, I don't think it gets any better. That's how I feel about it. Uh, I usually like bipods where, you know, instead of the rifle being up here on the bipod, I like it to be down inside the bipod because it adds stability. With this one, I never noticed that. It was just, it was just happy, stable, doing its job the whole time. So I am super happy with this bipod. But let me try to pick on it a little bit and throw some cons out there. First off, straight out the bat, it's pretty obvious, 300 bucks for a bipod is a lot of money. So you're gonna have to overcome that and realize that for 300 bucks, you're getting the best. That's all I can tell you about that. Oh, and the warranty and so on and so forth. Um, it's not gonna break on you and it's gonna last you a lifetime. <laughs> so let's go through some more cons for this. Um, the spring pressure on the leg to make that adjustment when you're, um, you know, when you're on rifle, that was difficult. Uh, the only way to fix that I think would be to lessen the spring pressure. But if you did that, it may not hold the leg so tight up in there. So it's something that I'm willing to deal with. 
Um, what else? The fact that the feet come loose, yeah, that stinks. I wish they'd just stick a little dab of Loctite on it at the factory, but you know, they're giving you a whole extra set of feet. So even if you bugger one up or you put it on something hot or whatever, you got extras. So I'm not really too concerned with that. Leg extension was great. Leg positioning was great. It snaps into place. The slop factor was almost negligible. I mean, a, a hint, I mean, just a slightest hint up here at the pivot point, a little more at the leg extension part. You know, I mean, when it comes to slop, that's all you got. And that's not much. So I kind of really dig that. Um, the height is good. Uh, <laughs> what do you, I mean, what do you want to say? Uh, I think the lever adjustment for tilt is the future of bipods. I think if, if you're not putting a lever on your bipod and you're making bipods today, uh, you're missing the boat because this is so nice and so easy to do. Uh, tilt feature, um, no, it's not glass smooth, but it really is just shy of being glass smooth. It's almost like you had a glass smooth thing and you put a little chalk in there and, and now it's just a little bit chalky. But I kind of like the drag. Um, oh, that reminds me, I didn't do my can I overcome <laughs> this feature test. So we'll lock down the tilt and see if I can defeat it. Yep! Jeez! <laughs> yeah, I can overcome tilt. But uh, it's just, I would say, one step shy of a mechanical lock. <laughs> so, uh, so guys, moving forward with my reviews, um, I think any further bipods are going to have more cons than this one does. Um, and I say that not only because I know what's coming, but I know what's behind me as well and the, the reviews I've already done. And I think I've reached the pinnacle with the AccuTac BR4G2. Um, and that's in, that's regarding the six to nine class, you know, that sits under the rifle, not an F series that, you know, more is more cradling the rifle, but this size of bipod, I just don't think it gets any better. Well guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this review on the BR4 G2 bipod from AccuTac Bipods. If you need more information on this bipod, or maybe you want one with the exact same, but with longer legs, head on over to AccuTac.com where you can look at their whole lineup of bipods and accessories. As a quick reminder, I'm on Airgun 101 now, and all my videos premiere on Airgun 101 first before going to that other video hosting site. Airgun 101 is really important to content creators such as myself, and it's helping to protect the sport that we love so much by giving us a safe place to host our videos for you guys to watch. So I'd really appreciate you watching my videos over there. Additionally, if you'd like to send a donation to Tomcat Airgun's channel, it really would go a long way towards the maintenance and continuation of this channel. You can do so by heading over to paypal.me forward slash Tomcat Airguns. I'd thank you very much for any donations you might send my way. As always guys, happy shooting and thanks for watching.